This video starts off at work with this thing here. This very musical little thing that blows lots of bubbles out. Now let's just strip it apart. Back at the bench now, let's take the bubble bear apart. That was at work. The original bubble bear went away with a colleague because she liked it. And that's reasonable enough. This bubble bear is another one I bought purely for our pleasure of taking it apart. It came from Poundland in the UK, by the way. It didn't cost a pound, but it was still affordable for the technology that is used inside it because it's actually worth salvaging bits from. So I'm taking the screws out the back of this. There is a battery compartment that contains... Uh, well, I'll take that off. I'll take the safety screw out that stops babies eating batteries and things like that. It takes three AA cells. And we've also got the back. We've got a reservoir here with a lid that unscrews. And it's got two pipes sealed in tightly. The tight seal to those pipes is actually quite important. It's uh, part of the way it operates and avoids spilling liquid everywhere. It is very clever, I have to say. Now, I've completely lost track of which screws... I've loosened, so I'll just keep, I'll just give them another spin and see at what point it comes apart. It's coming apart. I would let you hear the music louder that it plays out this little speaker, but I'm always worried that it's going to be picked up on uh, YouTube's very zealous uh, copyright protection system. Anyway, here's the little bubble unit. Here's the uh, bubble reservoir. Here is the bubble generating unit. And we'll take this completely apart because these things tend to be quite clever. Floating in the middle is the circuit board that plays the music. There's a button for enabling the whole unit. There's a little switch in the front, this one, that enables the music. And there's the bubble unit itself. This is the bit they're interested in. So we'll put all the stuff out of the way. I'll just cut this one free and then we'll open it up. One moment, please. Okay, the other stuff is out the way. Let's uh, zoom in a bit and then start getting this apart. This is just clipped together. Watch it just pop into lots of different pieces. So I'll loosen that clip and I'll loosen that clip. The motor at the back has a little 100 nanofarad capacitor across it for noise suppression, electrical noise. Because the, uh, the brushes are all continually making and breaking connection. It can cause crackling and electrical interference. Oh... That came apart rather quickly, which is the best way up for this. Not that. Anyway, what we have here is we have the motor with the fan, and it's basically pulling air in and blowing up here and directing it out there. We have a peristaltic pump based on this pipe here, which is feeding... Is this going to come apart? Yes. It's feeding a top port here, but there is also, actually, it's a, it's got a top port, and the other port is actually just directly below it. And then it's got a little wiper arm that is connected by gears, so it actually continually wipes around. And that's what creates the film of the, the bubble liquid. So, uh, motor with fan, driving onto a gear system, drives the peristaltic pump, and also drives... Oh, there's the other bit of the peristaltic pump. It's got two little rollers on it that basically pinch that silicone tube and push it against the side of the housing. And by doing so, it pushes the liquid round in little pulses. It's a very simple uh, pump with no complexity because it really is just squeezing the liquid along this silicone pipe. Right. I'll put that out of the way. That may be quite tricky to get together again. Oh, there's another cogwheel that escaped. This is the one that goes on to the end of that shaft, I believe. Yeah. And uh, couples on to wipe that wiper arm. So, at this point, I should take a photo of this and show you a close-up image of it and how it works. I'll do that. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. This is very complex. Here is the liquid carrier... Basically, it's a groove for carrying the liquid, and each of these little bits is designed to trap the bubble liquid and allow this wiping arm to basically spread it across. But the liquid, it's a shame this is black because it doesn't really show up too well, but there is a fairly large hole. That's a drainage hole, but I say drainage, it's not just drainage. 
As the liquid is pulled out of the tank, this uh, long hose will be the longest one. It will go down to the bottom here. And as it pulls the liquid out, with the peristaltic pump basically squishing it along this pipe, it pulls a vacuum in here. So this drainage hose is actually pulling a slight vacuum. And it, because it's using liquid up, there's a sort of net gain in vacuum over the amount of liquid coming out. And therefore, this is not just going to be pulling the liquid down, but it's going to be pulling little bubbles of air as well. That might be part of the operation. Here's a tiny hole, though, and this is the feed uh, line. I don't know if you can see that. It's very, very dark. I was looking for some sort of white pen. I could have made this more visible, but alas, no. But that is basically squirting the liquid out, and keep in mind there is a sort of frame round here as well, a sort of channel. And uh, it's a very tight friction fit onto this. And as this comes round, it seems to wipe that bulging pool of liquid across, and any excess is drained down that hole, but it's also wiping it around the outside, creating a continuous film. And as the air blows through, it blows bubbles through that film. I'd guess as the two sections here will be separate bubbles. Um, the liquid itself is complex in its own right. I mean, the whole toy is complex. The speed at which the pump delivers liquid will be important. The fact it's pulling a vacuum is important. And the shape of this is also important for sweeping that liquid round. But the bubble liquid itself is mainly based on water with a surfactant, uh, which is probably cocomidopropyl betaine, or it could be sodium lauryl sulfate. It's what you find in, just in basically shampoo. And uh, that creates, because those the surfactant molecules, they can combine onto oil and water, which is how the shampoo works, because it basically bonds the water onto oil, creates an emulsion. But because there is no oil here, and oil really ruins bubble fluid, um, instead they just join with their water bonds, and it basically forms a sort of a skin, that as the air blows through it, it blows it out, and then it form, closes up, and that's what creates the bubbles. But they also add something else to the liquid. It usually has a thickener, Something like hydroxyethyl cellulose, which uh, is added in a tiny quantity just to thicken it up and just make the bubbles stronger. And uh, you can also find hydroxyethyl cellulose in personal products designed for slipping your pink banana into a tight chocolate donut, let's say. I'll let you work out what those uh, lubrication materials are, water-based lubrication. And that uh, adds a thickness. I mean, they obviously don't use it much or it would just be very slimy, but it's just enough to actually create a much thicker meniscus. Um, and that's fundamentally it. Now, the other one I looked at, because I realised that I'd looked at a Disney toy, and it had the feed hole at one side, but it had the drainage hole at the other. But that's partly because it was designed to point up the way. I'm not sure how this would do with pointing up the way. But there's a lot of science. Everything is sort of optimised. The gearing is chosen with the peristaltic pump to deliver the fluid at the right speed to get a good airflow that's not too strong to the point it just bursts the bubbles straight away and not too low that it can't create the bubbles. And everything is just optimised, including the speed at which this wiper arm rotates. There's a lot of science in bubble toys. Other ones that are quite interesting have the little bubble ones. You get the two versions, the circular bubble ones that either dip in the liquid at the bottom and carry it up in front of the fan. But you also get the ones that they're just rotating in a sort of like an open port like this. But there is like this down here, but long ways. And as the ones pass over, it just basically loads them with liquid. It's very clever, particularly the fact it is pulling the vacuum. So it's always draining the liquid out this head instead of just letting it overflow. There is a lot of science in these toys. But there we have it, the uh, bubbly teddy bear thing that just, when you turn it on, it just blows bubbles out continually until this bottle is empty. I don't know how well it would scale up to adding new tube extensions and putting it in like a five-gallon container of liquid. I don't know what the lifespan of something like this would be. But that's it. A very, very interesting thing. The, uh, the bubble-blowing toys and the way they create a continuous meniscus to just allow them to blow bubbles continually. Very, very clever.